Hey, how's it going everyone? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we uh, put our play button on the screen, looking fabulous. And I gave you a challenge at the end to add to the other two buttons. So if you didn't do that, then make sure to check this video description and download the editor button and the quit button. And we're going to add them real quick right now. So menu UI add button editor texture name is a string which is editor button and for x we'll do the same thing with divided by 2 minus 128 and y will be int height times we'll say 0 0.5 maybe I should say 6 f we'll see how that looks let's try that that's too far 0 0.55 eh, yeah that's okay I'll work with that and menu UI dot add button uh, quit button oops I mean quit and then quit button x will be width divided by 2 minus 128 and the y will be an int of height times 0 0.65 f. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. And I know my play button is outdated. It's because I went back and changed them a little bit, but don't worry. Yours should match the uh, editor and quit button, hopefully. Mine is just outdated. I'll change it later. So... What we're going to do now is we are going to make it so that our buttons actually do something when you click them. Because right now they're just textures that we're drawing to the screen, just like the background. So, uh, in order to do that, we are going to work mostly in our UI class and a little in our button class. I'm not sure if we're going to do a lot in our button class, honestly, because I just want the button to hold the data for the button. as in like the X and the Y and the width and the height. I want the UI to really do everything, like draw it and deal with clicking. So we're going to work in the UI class, and we're going to say, we're going to make a, probably a lot of methods in here, uh, but we'll see. First off, first off we are going to make a, hmm, public boolean is button clicked, and it's going to take a string of the button name. And we're going to need a private button get button, which takes a string for the button name. And what that is going to do is it's going to go through our button list. So for button B in button list, we're going to say if B dot get name equals button name how many parentheses do I put here I knew I didn't do it right all right oh that's why sheesh all right so if b dot get name equals button name then return b otherwise return null so all this method does is it goes through every button in our button list and it looks for one that has a name of button name and then when it finds that it gives us that button. So now in our is button clicked we're going to work with button B which is equal to get button at button name and then we're going to say uh, if mouse actually we should make a uh, variable for our mouse y first so float mouse y equals height minus mouse dot get y minus one then we're going to check if mouse dot get x is greater than b dot get x and mouse dot get x is less than b dot get x plus b dot get width and next line here, um, mouse y 
is greater than b dot get y and mouse y is less than b dot get y plus b dot get height. Let me know in the comments if you do not understand what we're checking here. Basically we're just checking if the mouse is on top of the button. So if the mouse's x is greater than the far left side of the button but less than the far right side and if it's greater than the top and lower or higher than the uh, bottom. So the mouse is on top of the button that we're checking. That's what we're checking right now. And interestingly enough, we're going to be working on collision probably after the uh, after our UI basic UI menu stuff is done. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. We're really checking if the mouse cursor is colliding with the button. So we might actually... I'm not sure, but I'm just thinking out loud here, so don't hold me to this. But we might actually reuse some of this code for our uh, collision. Might make it a method that we call for... Like, we might just check if the mouse is colliding with the button. I don't know. That's that's further away. But anyway, so if the mouse is on top of that, then return true, and otherwise return false. So now we can go to our uh, main menu class here, and we should probably make another method, private void update buttons. I'll call it that for now. Not crazy about it. And we're going to say if mouse dot get nope dot is button down zero. So only do the rest of this update if, our, if we're actually clicking down. Then we can say if UI oops, keep doing that. Menu UI dot is button clicked play uh, we'll test it and just print out play button clicked all right and make sure in our update we update our buttons here all right so let's uh, run it now and see what happens So when we click, it's either going to fail miserably or work perfectly. All right, so clicking there doesn't do anything. That's good. That's good. So when we click play, hey, play button clicked. It worked. So we've now made it so that we can attach an action to our buttons. I, I'll agree it's in kind of a not perfect way yet. I mean, eventually we'll probably want to attach the action in a succinct method instead of just checking if it's clicked, then do this. But uh, for now, it's working just as the way we need it. So instead of printing, what we can actually do is go, first off, let's open our state manager here. And we need to make a new public static void set state. And it takes a game state called new state. And it's going to set our game state equal to new state. So that way, outside of this class, we can uh, call the set state function to change our game from the menu to the game to the editor, etc. So back in our main menu, we're going to say if play is clicked, then state manager dot set state uh, game state dot game. All right, so they'll switch it to the game update, which for right now is doing nothing. So we're going to do something similar to the main menu. We're going to say if game is equal to null, then game equals new game. And this is why we didn't do this earlier. If you'll recall, I said it's because we need to pass in the map. So we are going to do this in a not pretty way right now, but it's easily, I don't want to say fixable because it's not broken, but we will make it better uh, very soon here. But for now, we're actually just going to pass the, uh, hmm, I wonder if we just put the map in here actually. All right, so in our boot class, let's take this map, int map, copy that, and delete it. Let's go to our state manager here. And we can make it a static int map. And the game takes our map. So like I said, not a perfect solution, but this is just until we make the... Uh, editor which will then load and save maps and that's actually not too far away so I mean this huge block of numbers that's really ugly and in the way 
is not going to last long because we're just going to use our editor to make and save maps and stuff. But uh, let's try it out. So we run the game, and hopefully when we click this... Uh-oh. Beginning, beginning wave one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Never a dull moment here. Uh, it's because we're... Hmm. We're still drawing the menu splash screen on top of our game, is what I imagine here. Uh, let's see. Like, what if we started the game state equal to game state game? Would that work? Ah, okay. So the issue runs deeper. Interesting. We're not able to draw our game. All right, let me figure this out real quick. Oh my gosh, this is so obvious. I I'm kind of upset that I didn't see it before. Okay, literally took me like ten seconds. All right, change this back to game state. Dot main menu. And you guys probably, or you might have seen what I didn't see, but all we're doing is making a new game and we're never updating it, which is really awkward. So we just need to call game dot update. Now, hopefully, we have our menu, and when we click play, it puts us in the game. So it does also put a tower here, as you'll notice. Um, so depending on where we click on the button, if we click it like on the far right here, it puts a tower over here. That is something that is easily fixable and we'll probably do... Nah, yeah, we'll do that next time because we need to make a method that we can use throughout the game. It might be a helper, actually, like a mouse helper that we make to kind of handle clicks and stuff to figure that stuff out. Because right now we have in the player class where in the player class we're checking this whole, uh, you know, if it's down, boolean. I don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, left mouse button down, boolean and stuff. This might get moved to a static class so we can just access the mouse wherever we are in the game. But that is for next time. So now, what we've done is we've made our buttons that we can draw on the screen, and we can click them and they actually do stuff in our game, which is super awesome, because now we can start working a lot quicker in our UI and actually see changes in the game other than just behind-the-scenes stuff. The last two episodes have been kind of behind-the-scenes, but now we can actually make buttons that do stuff instantly, and there actually isn't a lot of code that we need to do for it. I mean, we just add a button like that in one line, and then we just check to see what it does And I mean, technically two lines. It could be one line. But uh, yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.